Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 8, Lesson 17, using box plots. Okay, so first of all, we have a little story here about slumber. It says that 10 6th grade students were asked how much they sleep in hours, and they usually get on a school night. Here's the five number summary statement, minimum and maximum, the median, first and third quartile. It says on the grid, draw a box plot. Okay, so let's start with our first quartile and third quartile, which is 7 and 8. So that's going to be our box. Our box is going to be between 7 and 8. So we have quartile 1 and quartile 2. We can put our median, which is at 7.5. So it's going to go in the middle there. And then we can make a, a whisker for our minimum, which goes down to 8. Uh, sorry, goes to 5. That's here. And our maximum, which goes to 9, which is right here. All right. So there is our box and whisker plot right there. So what could we answer? We could talk about what is the, um, uh, the least amount of time kids sleep, what is the most time kids sleep, we talk about how many, what, what number of kids get between seven and eight hours of sleep a night. These are things we could tell by that um, box plot right, right there. You can't tell everything, but we can get some values there based upon that and have a pretty good feel. Okay, again, there's 10 kids, right? So you know that half of them are going to fall in this category here. Um, and then the other half, you have two and a half, two and a half. So it's kind of weird to have two and a half kids, but somehow or other it works out. All right, in activity two, it's an info gap. Your teacher's going to give you some cards, a problem card or data card. And again, as always, you're going to have a conversation with your partner and talk about those cards and ask questions about them and see what is happening on each other's cards by asking some good questions. Remember, just ask your partner for what specific information you need. Wait for your partner to ask questions there. And then um, don't just tell them things. Let them try to figure things out, OK? All right, I'm going to skip that part. I'm going to go to activity number three called Paper Planes. We're going to use this data for uh, several things here. It says, Andre, Lynn, and Noah each designed a paper and built paper airplanes. They launched each plane several times and recorded the distance that they flew. And nice, they put the distances in order from 25 to 30, 20 to 32, 13 to 25. We're going to use this to summarize the data uh, with numbers and then later into a box plot. Okay. So the nice part here is that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 values. So I'm going to have a very simple way of uh, making my quartiles here. What I did is because it's 11, I went and said, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This becomes quartile 2 right here. This whole column is quartile 2. That's the middle. Okay. Now to find the middle of the next one is quartile 1. That becomes this value right here. And the middle of these guys is right here, quartile 3, right there. Meaning this is my minimum and this is my maximum. Because the first thing I want to do is to make these, put all these points in this little box right here. So Andre was up here at 25. And we can just go down. Lynn is at 20. Noah is at 13. Quartile 1, 27, 21, 15. Median, 28. Also 28 and 20. Quartile 3, 29, 29 and 23. And the maximum, 30, 32, and 25. IQ, our members, Q3 minus Q1. So 29 minus 27 is 2. 29 minus 21 is 8. And 23 minus 15 is also 8. So I have similar IQRs here. I have the same medians there. Those are the only things that match up. But that's just what I see so far. Okay. So now it wants us to then draw a box plot using these numbers right there. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. Let's draw some box plots. Okay, so for Andre, Andre, the box is going to be from 27 to 29. For Lynn, the box is 21 to 29. And for Noah, the box is 15 to 23. Okay, so let's try Andre first, 27, which is about here. And going to 29. There's Andre's box. Okay, so we'll put Andre here. Lynn's box here is 21 to 29. So we'll go to 21 to 29. And Noah's box is 15, which is here, to 23. 1, 2, 3. So those are our boxes there. 
The median for Andre was 28, so that's going to go here. The median for Lynn was also 28, so it's also going to go there. The median for Noah was 20, so we'll put his right there. Now let's add our minimums. Our minimums for Andre was 20, uh, 25, so that's going to be here. Our minimums for Lynn was 20. That's there. And the minimum for Noah was 13. So we're going to go back to the maximum for Noah was 25. The maximum for Lynn was 32. And the maximum for Andre was 30. Okay. So that's about what we have there. So how are the results for Andre and Lynn's planes the same? So Andre and Lynn's planes. Well, a couple things we see is that they have the same medians, right? The medians are the same, so that's interesting. In terms of how they're different, we can see that that Lynn had a greater uh, spread or a greater, what we call it, the IQR, which means he had what? He had more variability. That means that for Andre, he had a smaller IQR, so he was more consistent. Okay, so while their means were the same, and the medians were the same, Andre was much more consistent because his this has less of an IQR. The box is smaller, the values were all in that area there. Lynn had a lot of lower ones. So how are the results for Lynn and Noah? It's playing the same. Okay, well for Lynn and Noah, um, we could see, and the graph here we can't see, but back in the table, we know that their IQRs were both 8. So you had the same variability there, right? But Lynn had a higher median, so he flew further or longer, I should say, than uh, Noah did most of the times. Noah's went a lot less, okay? Now, if Priya joined the air paper airplane experiment, she launched her plane 11 times and recorded the links that she did as well. She found her maximum to be this, a minimum the same as Lynn's. So Lynn's maximum was 32, his minimum was 20. Her IQR, the difference between Q3 and Q1, was equal to Andre's, and Andre's IQR was 2. So can we draw a box plot? Uh, sort of. Well, we know the minimum's at 20, so we can draw a line right here at 20, no problem. We know the maximum is 32, so we can draw that line over here at 32. So we have our whiskers. Now what about the box? We know the box from Q3 to Q1 has to be a width of 2. So it can be anywhere between here and be 2. I could put it right here and go out 2 and be done. Is that accurate? I don't know. I know that quartile 1 and quartile 3 has a width of 2. Right? I know I have a minimum and I have a maximum. This could have been over here. Now, in terms of a quartile 2, it could be on the line. It could be somewhere else. I'm not sure. This part is unknown from the data set. So can you estimate the median? No, we really can't. We don't have enough information to do that, though. This whole part here varies. The size we know, but where the points lie, that we don't know. OK, so looking at your summary for today, Box plots are useful for comparing different groups. And then we can see here is a box plot for berry weights and grape weights. We can see they have a similar um, uh, um, IQR. They look very similar in terms of how they're spread out. But we can tell the medians here and here that the grapes overall seem to weigh more than the berry weights there. Okay. So sometimes when the IQRs are the same, we can look at the median and get a feel for what's going on. Other times we can have the similar median, but the IQRs talks about the variance here in the weights. While the median um, length of ladybugs and beetles are the same, we can see there's less variance in, in ladybugs and a whole lot of variety in the beetles there. Okay, so that's it for today. We're going to pause there, let you work on your homework. We'll come back and check that again in just a few minutes.
All right, here are box plots that summarize the heights of 20 professional male athletes in basketball, football, hockey, and baseball. Okay, so here they are. In which two sports are the players' height distributions most alike? So we're looking for where is that spread the most similar? Okay, so when I look here, basketball is really on its own. Football is a little longer. So the most alike, I would say, would be hockey and baseball. That seems to be the most alike because they have a similar like length for their box and whisker plot there. That's what I would say, but make sure you explain it. Which sport shows the greatest variability? The greatest variability is going to be the biggest span, right? The biggest spread. And that's happening here in basketball, going from there to there. That's the most variability. In terms of the least variability, you'd probably take a look at baseball because it has the smallest spread of numbers there. Number two, here's a box plot that summarizes the data for time and minutes that a fire department took to respond to 100 emergency calls. Okay, so we know that because the way the plot works, there's 25 calls here. There are 50 calls in this whole box and 25 calls there. Again, this is one fourth, this is a half, and this is a fourth. Okay, so which statements are true? where most of the response times were under 13 minutes. Well, 13 minutes is here. This is our 13 spot there. So were most of them under 13? Yeah, about 75% were, so we can call that most. That'd be fine. Fewer than 30 of the response times were over 13. Well, we said there were 25 of them. Fewer than 30? 25 is fewer than 30. So indeed, that is true. More than half of the response times were 11 minutes or greater. Well, 11 is here. Can I say for certain that 11, that half of them, a 50, were on this side of the number line? Mm, nope, I know 25 and some, but I can't say if it was 50 or not. There were more response times that were greater than 13 minutes than those that were less than nine. Well, greater than 13, and nine is gonna be here. Here's nine. So, more here than there. Well, there's 25 and 25, but then I also get to include these guys plus a 25, so that's not true. And about 75% of response times were 13 minutes or less. Again, going from here to here, is this 75%? If I combine those together, I have a fourth and a half. That is indeed 75%, so that's true. All right, looking at the back page, next page. There we go. Pineapples were packed in three large crates. For each crate, the weight of every pineapple in the crate was recorded. Here are three box plots that summarize the weights in each crate. Select all the statements that are true according to box plots. All right, so here we go. The weights of pineapples in crate one were the most variable. They had the biggest spread, definitely had the biggest spread. That looks true. The heaviest was in crate one. Well, the heaviest, we can look at the maximum. And the heaviest was indeed right here in crate one was six pounds. That's true. The lightest, the lightest is the minimum over here. And that's in crate two, so not crate one. So that's not true. Crate three had the greatest median weight and the greatest IQR. Well, median weight is um, no, because this one seems to be a little bigger here. We can see that D has a bigger median rate looks a little, bit, a little bit more, just a guess. So three is a larger median weight than, um, than one, that's true, but a greater IQR? No, the IQR has to, is the box size, and this is a bigger box than this one, so that's not true. So more than half the pineapples in crate one and crate three were heavier than the heaviest. So half is gonna be from the median on, so this is half here, and half here, were those values here heavier than the heaviest pineapple in crate two? Yes, it was. And finally, number two, two show, TV shows each ask 100 viewers for their ages. For one show, the mean age of the viewers was 35 years old, and the mean absolute deviation was 20. For the other, the mean was 30, and the mean absolute deviation was, was uh, five years. So for show one, you had an average age of 35 for show two, an average age of 30. But that mean absolute deviation meant that it can be 20 years less, 20 years more on average. So if we take away 20 and add 20, we're gonna be at 15 or we'll be at 55, 
okay? If we take away over here, mean absolute deviation of five, you're gonna be 25 years to 35 years. So a sixth grade student's gonna fall in which one of these categories? The 25 to 35 range or the 15 to 55 range? Probably a little closer to this group. And we'd also say most likely because it does have a greater mean absolute deviation, more variability, so it's more likely he's part of that one there. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.